What's going on, everybody? This is Brent Swanson from Midwest Muscle Report. I'm here today with Thomas Linehan, fresh off his seventh place uh, victory at um, the Wings of Strength Chicago Pro. Thomas, how are we doing, buddy? Good. How are you doing, Brent? Good, good, good. Now, um, for those of you who don't know, um, Thomas won the USA's last year, and this is his rookie season. Um, as an IFBB pro. So Thomas, uh, first of all, congratulations on placing seventh as a rookie in a pretty stacked Chicago lineup. But can you kind of get into, you know, the major differences you see competing on the amateur level versus the pro level? Yes. Uh, first and foremost, I mean, as we were speaking earlier a little bit, every small thing matters now. It's, it's starting from the bottom up again, you know. So as at the USA's, I mean, as I was telling you uh, before, I mean, my first time doing the USA is I got fourth, and then I grinded up and got second, and then finally got first and got my pro card last year. Now, as a pro, I have that same mindset. Now the game has changed. Now I'm going against all the past champions at the national level, and me being, you know, a new face as a pro and a new body, you know, I gotta, you know, earn my look. You know, I, I gotta, I gotta keep improving, keep grinding, and making those improvements now as a pro because. You know, I always had to make that light heavyweight as the USA is at 198. Now I have that open water now between 198 and 212 because that's and that's where I have to figure out the equation. The equation is changing for me. Where do I fall best? I still have room to grow because I do have you know 12, 13 pounds ago. I mean, I could fill my frame up. I mean, I, I I mean, I was weighing probably 205 at Chicago Pro. So I mean, I still have room to get put, add more muscle to my frame and condition the muscle and. As I was speaking to you, you know, my front side seems to still be a little ahead, so I need to find a way to make the back side match the front in order to be, you know, one of those pros contending in that top in that first call out. To make a first call out, I have to be more complete. And you know I me, mean? I'm old school, so I got to go back to the drawing board and make those improvements on my back side. For, and you know, honestly, make improvements all over as a pro now. I can't settle for one, you know, one area. I just got to be more complete now. Right. So. And now, one thing that I you know, love about you and your look is that, you know, we've competed with each other, you know, a few years ago in the Muscle Mayhem, and I knew you a little bit before that as well, but you consistently get better and better and better, and I respect that as a bodybuilder because you can't short, you can't short change, you know, change, and you do it, and you grind it out, and you're in shape year-round. Sure, you know, you're going to be a little bit heavier in your off-season, but you're always grainy and always just really tight, and it's a lifestyle for you, and I like bodybuilders who live it as a lifestyle. Now, saying that, um, I personally think that the Chicago Pro has been your best look to date. Um, you know, we were kind of talking about the New York Pro. You're a little, you didn't have as much pop to you. I mean, you're conditioned and you're hard. I mean, that's never going to go away because you stay in shape. But at the Chicago, it seemed like you filled out a little bit more. Um, what, what are your thoughts on the uh, on your two pro shows and your two different looks? And where do you kind of go from here? Well, at the New York, the, the goal was to get absolutely shredded and peeled because, uh, you know, you can't, you can't go, you can't make a mistake by being peeled, you know, and, and let the judges recognize you. But then at the same time, you're going against some, you know, major pros at the New York Pro. I mean, from Guy to Sean Claridia, you know, to the, you know the, the legitimate pros that have been on the Olympia stage, you know, several Olympians were at the New York Pro. And I knew I couldn't match them you know, size to size just yet. So I said, let's come in shredded and condition and see what it looks like and see how it stacks up. And, you know, I, I was pleased with it, but I thought I could bring more flare pop. And it was, you know, five weeks or six weeks to go between the New York and the Chicago. That was the goal was to keep it fuller, yet conditioned and more balanced. And honestly, I'm, I'm agree 100% with you. I think that my Chicago look was my best look to date. Uh, I still could be better, obviously, as a pro. The way, you know, I was, you know, got seventh there. I just missed that first call out. So now I have to find a way to get in that first call out as a pro. Now and to do that, I gotta, you know, I, I I still have room to grow. I mean, I at 35, I'm not 55 as I told you earlier. So I mean, some days you feel older, but you know, I, I always bank on consistency and, and improving. I take my off season serious, and uh, I don't I don't get out of shape as you as as you said. I just I have I plot it out. I always stay within striking distance, but I still have to have some kind of surplus to improve in the off season. You know, you got to have some kind of uh, extra kick in the off season to you know, make those improvements. You can't stay in contest shape all year round. Oh, of course. But with 
but within reason, you know. So, you, I mean, it's a simple old thing. Look in the mirror, and if you don't like what you're seeing in the offseason, it's going backwards, and you're not getting better. That's not off season, you know. That's 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 not maintaining. That's not that's going backwards, you know. So that's what I and I always and as I said, I bank on the old school training mentality, you know. I I, I do train extremely intense and heavy at times. I pick my battles because and when we train the way we do, we know what can happen. But yeah. you know, you know, you blast your body with heavy training, and then you got to learn to kind of you know cruise it with a you know deloading a little bit with the training, but. That's always been my off season, you know. You 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 got six to eight weeks to really put on some major tissue, and then uh you got to kind of glide for four to six weeks after that, you know, because you can't go hundred miles an hour gaining. Because honestly, you know, I'm not Phil Heath, I'm not the genetic gifts out there, so I have to bank on everything I have. And you know, I I always say, you know, you, you know, a spade is a spade. I mean, genetics are that. I mean, you have to own your genetics, and the only way you can really truly know your potential is to exhaust. You know, your training and your food efforts. I mean, I, right. I tell people that. And, and, you know, a lot of times we, we, we quit on those efforts and, or we settle. And, you know, that never settle mentality is uh, what gets us, you know, through the national ranks and to the pro ranks. And now to get better as a pro, I have to have that same mentality. When that mentality leaves me, that's when I walk off the stage for good, you know. But until right. I, still, I still got that fire inside, that desire to get better and, Taking a year to get better and put it back on a 212 stage as we spoke, I mean, that's what I have to do. I have to find a way to look different next year. Not, I'm not going to look, I'm not going to be 230 pounds on stage, but I'm going to be, uh, I'm, I'm going to look different. I mean, that's, I have to be confident in my ability to do that. Like you said, like a year is plenty of time. You know, sometimes we don't think it is, but it is. I mean, what you can do in a year with uh, feeling good in your offseason, staying healthy. And injury free, but tra- you know, training as hard as you can and pushing the food where you, you can, it's, you're only bound to get it better, you know. So, right, and you know, um, I think a lot of times when people say off season and you know, they kind of go way off their diets and different foods, you know, it's the same food for the most part, it's just a bigger quantity. And you know, I follow you on some different forums and everything, and people in the off season always say, Thomas, you're so grainy, you're so dense, and everything like that. And your response, and I agree 100% with you, is that, you know, you, you, you keep it tight and you keep it with those same food groups. I mean, yeah, you're going to have a cheat meal here and there, but you're not going way off the wagon. And when you do that consistently, you stay dry and grainy and hard. And then when you get into show shape, it makes it a world easier. Now, exactly. now, now I'm saying all that. Now, in saying all that, um, you know, we talked and you said that next year, Chicago Pro, you're going to come back on stage um, with a different look and everything like that. Um, when Now, when you shut it down and everything like you're going to right now, where what are the um, – are you going to prioritize your training? You know, you said you want to get bigger from the backside. Um, are you going to do more work? of the back and then some of your strengths you're just going to maybe train once a week or how's that really going to look for you or have you even thought that far I, i've been plotting that you know how we do at the end of preps we, we start thinking about what we're going to do next you know just because our minds are spinning and we want to you know figure out a plan that makes sense for us and that's exciting that's a fun part about it how can we get better and that's the challenge of it um you know, it's funny because my bread and butter, and people, a lot of people don't know this, I've done every style of training I'm, you know, in, in the book. I've tried it all. And, and my bread and butter that got me my best, you know, from a dense standpoint, was people don't know it was the blood and gut style, you know, mm-hmm. DYE style. And, and people don't know that about me. They think, oh, he's high volume. I've done high volume, I've done moderate volume, I've done DY volume, Dorian Yates volume. And, and, and blood and gut style, that's what did it for me. That's what got me to become. The level I am now, and then I, and then I, I had a hybrid. I had a mix and match because I, right. and um now yes I'm gonna train back twice a week. So that's one thing that's gonna be uh, implemented for sure. Um so four days, and then and then a, a, an extra day, so five days in the gym to get the back in. So I'm gonna hit back twice a week, and three other days will be the other muscle groups. So right, uh, right. I, I you need, you need time to heal. You know, and you know these people can train seven days a week, three hundred sixty five days a year. And, you know, recovery is part of the equation. It's, it's in, you know, that mindset is, is a new age mindset, you know. And I honestly still have that old school mindset. You know, if you got five days, you're going to put everything into those five days. If you got seven days, you might stretch it out. 
right. your intensity. Awesome. I, I say roll the dice. If you got five days, you're going to go all out because you know you got two days to heal or recover. That was my mindset with the four-day split many year, moons ago when I did it was uh, I only got four. I, I'm so used to train every day. Now, now I only have four days to train. How am I going to approach this? It's either a do or die type of approach. You know, you either get it done in those four days because you got three days you're out of the gym to heal and grow and recover. Because, you know, the breaking happens in the gym, the growing happens outside of the gym. You know, that the building step happens. Back, you know. steps forward. Yeah, exactly. So now that I've figured that out, I can go seven days a week. That's the, physically if I wanted to. Now, would it break? Yeah. Would I, would I, would I start, you know, I hate saying overtraining because most people are undertraining, but, you know, but if your intensity is there, your, your, your nervous system will get shot. You know, you're training hard, you know, so I have to, at 35 years old, when I'm not getting any younger, so I, I play that, now it's that hybrid. I'm in the, in the between, I'm five days in the gym, you know, back, prioritizing, like you said, the back is going to be training twice a week till it gets better, simple as that. And I might talk, toss some, some touch-up stuff, like on the hamstrings and so forth, but nothing crazy. My vo- I'm not a super high volume guy anymore. I mean, I've used to do that stuff. I've done it all. I mean, yeah. but it, yeah. you figure out what works. And you know what? To be honest, high if you have high and low, the middle always did the best for me. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. there you go. The consistent part of bodybuilding was always the middle for me. Right. So right. Now let me ask you this. Um, your, your, your first pro show, um, when you stepped on that stage you know, at the New York, uh, did you have any butterflies? Were you nervous or were you just pretty confident going in? And how did you feel, you know, Right when you're backstage about to go out at the New York versus the Chicago, um, what, was it kind of the same emotions, or were you a little bit more settled at the Chicago? I felt good at the Chicago. I was, I was, I'm always nervous. I mean, I'm a quiet guy. I'm, I'm, I'm but ner- nerves are good. So it, it's what makes you rise for the challenge. But uh, the, yeah, the New York Pro was, you know, it was East Coast, and I'm Midwest, so yeah. it was going the Midwest to the East Coast, which I wanted to do because. You know, I, I respect the, the West Coast, the East Coast, but I want to bring the Midwest bodybuilding out that way, and and that was my goal. And I wanted to look good. I wanted to look. I wanted to know I could stand on that stage with them at on that New York Pro stage, and and I felt good about it. I mean, yeah, I was nervous. It was my first pro show, and it was my debut as a pro and whatnot. And uh, I mean, I'm I'm not really you know I don't get intimidated by bodybuilders, you know. So right. my my goal was uh, just to get on stage and. Honestly, see what it looked like, do my best. You know, I've had some mishaps with my tanning in the past, as we people know. And uh, that always seems to be the biggest nerves for me is uh, is the tan looking right. You know, that's that's my biggest concern. You know, right. and and th- that's and, and that added stress. Those little stresses that's why I didn't happen in Chicago. I mean, Chicago was a uh, everything was in the convention center, less stress, which I was saying with New York, but I felt. More comfortable, I knew a lot of guys, you know, John Meadows, Brad Davis, Armand, all these guys, Shelby, you know, some some of those guys, that we, we all began, we talked be, to each other before we were pros. We, we all knew each other as amateurs. Right. So right. to step on that stage was a kind of that camaraderie. Yes, we all want to do our best and outpose each other. That's body when You go out there to compete, you don't go out there to shake each other's hands on stage. But at the same time, it was all that camaraderie I felt. It's respect. At, uh, it's a respect. It's thing. respect, yeah. And I respect those guys. With the utmost, you know. I mean, we all have our personalities. We all have our avenues of doing things. But at the end of the day, we're all bodybuilders that you know want to be better. You know, so Chicago was. Uh, it felt it felt more comfortable. So yes, I would say I was more comfortable. I felt good. Right. So, well, I, was, I was just. Go I was ahead. gonna say it, it. It definitely showed, and um, you know, uh, I just think you know, with your hard work ethic, and you know, like I said, I've known you for years. You know, you just keep consistently getting better. Your rookie season, placing seventh, almost cracking that top five at a pretty big stack 212 lineup, man. I just think, you know, in the next few years, just kind of how you said at the USA's, you know, you place, you know, fourth, you play second, and then you won. And now you're moving the ranks up through, you know, the IFBB. And I just think it's a matter of time, you know, before you know, you hit those goals and you hit those markers because like you said, we, me and you both are Midwest lifters. We're Midwest bodybuilders and we pride ourselves in hard work, doing it the right way and staying consistent. So, man, I just think, you know, the sky's the limit for you. I'm excited for you. Um, you know, we're going to be checking in with you and uh, your progress in the off season. And uh, you definitely motivate the heck out of me. And I know that um, you motivate the heck out of a lot of other people. So uh, I just want to say that. And uh, we appreciate your time, brother.
Uh, anytime, right, man. Like I said, we're Midwest bodybuilders, and we pride ourselves on, you know, putting that effort into getting better, man. Like I said, congrats. You bring it to the USA's. I, 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 I'll be cheering you on. You know that's for sure. Um because I, I mean, like I said, I want, I want the Midwest. I think we can rise and be that good. We are that good. We, we have the mentality and the work ethic to, to do it. You know, we just have to be seen. You know, and in order to be seen, we have to produce uh, the result. You know, and honestly, we, 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 are, we are doing that. You know, so it's, it's bodybuilding. Body you know, the camaraderie is, is it's good. It's, it's stronger in the Midwest, and, and people don't see that. You know, they yeah. think it's only East and West. So it's nice to see again. You know, like the old school days, everyone. Was able to train and, do, and 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 talk shop, you know, bodybuilding, you know, and and you want that to stay alive, you know, that old school mentality. It seems to fade some days, but you know, if it's if it's up here, it's not going anywhere. If, if your mindset is, you must and you will, you you're, you're going to put your effort towards it. You know, the old Midwest values. So. Exactly. You know, you know, people can knock social media and everything like that, and it, it does have. It does annoy me. Like, I know it is a lot of hardcore bodybuilders. But I will say the one avenue that it has let us in on is that, you know, I can follow people like you and, you know, people like John Meadows and people, you know, bodybuilders that I personally look up to, you know, read a post or read about their training. And then it motivates me maybe when I'm having a hard day. And then, you know, I'll have the people say the exact same thing when I post something. So, I mean, there there, there is good for that. And it's almost kind of like iron sharpens iron. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like, we're, we're all we're all wanting to win and we're all wanting to be our best but you know you kind of feed off that energy from other athletes and you know that's how it should be so um, yeah exactly like i mean i saw you and adam mcveigh sticking your tongues out doing the most muscular that was cool yeah. that's that, that, pump, that pumps up any bodybuilder who appreciates bodybuilding you know because you guys are both competitors you both want to win that's yeah. that's a given so but who says you can't go do it with a flare, you know? And you exactly. both did it that way, and I and that, that was good to see, you know. You guys were having fun. The effort, the the result was done. Now, now put it on stage, you know? Yeah, like, exactly. Show all the weeks of hard work and dieting. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because everyone trains to win. We don't train to lose. Anyone who says you know they train to lose, that's that's a cop out. You always train to win, you know. And if and if it doesn't fall where it may, you come back and you go back to the gym and go back to the diet and you figure it out. I mean, yeah. you know, that's that's bodybuilding, you know? Yeah, you, it's, make, uh, you, you, make, you make the adjustments that you need to make to be your best. And, yeah, you know, the body is a very com complex thing and what might work for person A doesn't work for person B and you just got to, you know, figure it all out. So, but exactly. anyways, Thomas, thank you so much, buddy, for your time. Thank you. Um, yeah. We will definitely be checking in with you over the next few months and maybe even do some segments on your, during your off season and do some check-ins because I know that um, you're somebody that we can all learn a lot from. So anyways, thank, thanks so much for your time. This is Brent Swanson from Midwest Muscle Report. Thank you. For more great videos, click on the links attached and get more info from Midwest Muscle Report.